Hello and welcome back. All right, so let's move the search bar to the front page here and include this uh, price range thingy here. All right, so we can add this just after this section here with categories. So let's see where that is. Now, since we are repeating this search bar uh, like this, it would be nice to just put it in a separate file of its own. That way we can carry it around and move it from page to page without a problem. So let me go up here and see where it starts. It starts from there. And let's add advanced, advanced search or something similar. Let me reduce this text to H4. All right, so that ought to do. And let me copy it. And we're just going to change a few styles on the other side. So copy that. And what I will do is let me go to my, um, let's go to our admin, uh, not really admin views. Let's go to here where we have the sidebar. Where is the sidebar? There we go, sidebar.include. So this is where we have our categories quite all right. This is all good. Shipping text center, mm, shipping JPEG. Okay, so that I'm assuming is this one right here. So which means this whole part is with the sidebar here. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Okay, so what we will do is, let's just add it right here. Since it seems to already have room for that. So let's do this. And uh, category end, search box start there. Advanced search, awesome. Let's refresh and see what monstrosity we've created. Okay, uh, very nice, uh, actually not so good. So what we need to do is get rid of the uh, titles, like for example, description. Uh, we don't need to know the description here. We can add that as a placeholder. So what's the placeholder here even? It says uh, type uh, product description. Let's just say product, product name, maybe. Let's say type product name. So I've removed that heading there. Okay, good. And then we don't need to put them in uh, to double these up. So let me remove category as well. This is why I added select category here so that we can, customers don't have to struggle to know what's going on here. At least for the admin, it's easy because uh, that will be your tool so you would know what's going on, but uh, not so much for people that are trying to search. So let's see what that does. All right, that's uh, pretty good. The only problem is these columns over here. So until we finish off all the columns, the other one will not work well. So no big deal. Let's go ahead and uh, do that. So let's see here we have Brand, we only need one item per uh, a column. So no need to put the column span here anymore because it's just going to be one column anyway. So let's do that. And price, wait a minute, get brands, brands. Maybe we do need a brands title here though. So let me copy that because we don't actually have anything there. Uh, I'm just going to say, hmm, wait a minute, table data. Instead of that, let's just add a div, convert that to a div and just say brands like this. I don't know what kind of brands that is. Okay, now price, um, we may need that as well. This is where we have mean and max, but 
let's change this table header to div like so price price range probably would be better and this is a div okay cool cool table data nice and quantity so these are in separate these should be separated here so let me put this inside a div as well and then what I would do is create another row here so that we can excuse uh, that one row there so actually I should have closed this one and started a new one like so okay good so quantity yes yes all good uh, here let's do the same thing we have select year here so they know what is going on so let's remove that uh, title there no need and uh, what's this one here this one is for the submit so no need for the column span to be so long since we only have one let's refresh and see uh, how this has improved all right great 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 so select year, nice. Then we have these min max, min max, which we don't know what's going on because the uh, the titles are above here. Hmm, interesting. So considering that we have um, this is the way it is here. Actually, we can do it the way I've done this here on brands. So let me just look at brands. How has brands survived? Okay, so it's inside table data. All right, I see why it has survived. So just move this table data above the title for quantity. Do the same for price range, like so. Uh, that should help. Let's come back here and refresh. Okay, so finally we have brands, we have price range, we have quantity min max min max so these two guys are taking quite an amount of space here and then select year select category good but before we start messing with this uh, we should see if it actually works as an advanced search here so advanced search category it would be nice to use this titling here for the advanced search as well so let's find that shall we if I go to let me just go up here and okay so it's all it is is an h2 right so let me come back here eh? let's change this four to two and see if the styling will apply as well refresh and uh, what do you know it does apply okay so advanced search awesomeness so the only thing now we need to uh, to do is remove this price range and quantity and yeah that will create more space what we want to add is this so how exactly do we add this now a good way to uh, to see what's going on is to right click and inspect the element yes so let's inspect our element for a brief moment here so what I can see from this is that, um, so also important to fiddle with it. Uh, I saw something happening here. Okay, so there's a class that is being added when I hover on this to show the two tip at the top there. Okay, pretty good. But what if I move the range? Okay, so Firefox is kind enough to highlight what is changing in these uh, objects here which is very nice. Uh, it helps to figure out what's going on. And this thing apparently has an event listener here. So when I'm moving this, there's some event happening. If I click on the event here, I will see that there's a mouse down, a mouse out, mouse over. And all of these lead to the jQuery uh, library. So I don't really want to mess with jQuery here. So the beauty of JavaScript is that we can add our own event listeners here uh, regardless. So that's not a big deal. We're going to add our very own. But let's see what's really changing. Do we have solid numbers? As you can see here, there are numbers changing. 175, 510, 
and the price price range is up to six hundred dollars okay uh, six hundred dollars there I had uh, changed it a little bit here because I noticed there's an input there which has a max a data slider max which was set to 600 but I altered it to 800 it didn't change the display there because the display apparently is changed by this thing down here so seeing this you can add dynamic content to it because it seems the uh, range here is determined by this number here and you have to change it if I change it right now to let's say 600 it doesn't really change the range so you have to refresh the page with a new value and it has to be hard-coded for everything to work out but so far I think it's quite easy to see what's happening here now as to where the numbers are being saved that is important because we need to know what range was selected here there's 120 to 555 for now 240 to 555 so where are those numbers I don't see them so it seems the input here is not updated let's click on the two tip here and as you can see we do have some data in the two tip here yep that data is more accurate because it's showing the actual range as it is being typed entered there so for lack of a better input, I would have preferred if this data value was actually changing as we change things here, but apparently it isn't. So that sucks, but it's okay. We can use the values in the two tip regardless. So let's get those values and uh, mess with them. So I'll close this and let's actually add this uh, in the next video so that we can uh, do a whole episode on it how to fix it uh, here all right so see you in the next video